Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Homespun, number 77 I believe, and it really is a joy and uh, pleasure to have this opportunity to sing to you. We've got a very special guest who will be coming up soon, Mark James, and uh, I'm really looking forward to chatting with him and renewing acquaintance and hearing some of his music and his songs. He's a, a wonderful musician, songwriter, worship leader, all-round good guy, guitarist, and, uh, well, we're going to have a great time this afternoon. Um, we need to remind ourselves again and again and again about the overwhelming love of God revealed to us through Christ, a love that enfolds us, a love that surrounds us, a love that is with us in all our situations, wherever we are, both here and abroad, there's nothing could separate us from that love. It's a strong love. It's a love that sustains and gives hope and confidence for the future. And these are some simple words written by the Apostle Paul, set to music by myself. We simply say this. Who can separate from the love of God Who can separate us From the love of God I'll sing it again Who can separate us From the love of God Who can separate us from the love of God Not death, no life There's no depth, no height No power in this world Not anything the future brings Can come between my Lord Who can separate from the love of God Who can separate us From the love of God Not death nor life There's no depth nor height No power in this world Not anything the future brings can come between my Lord Who can separate us From the love of God Who can separate us From the love of God Who can separate from the love of God Who can separate us From the love of God There's nothing can separate us Yeah well, a big welcome to you all. It's really a great privilege to be able to share and sing something of what is so meaningful to me, the truth that Christ is with us. How are you all doing? We're coming to that start of the Christmas season. Have you got your tree up yet? Pat and I, well, we went down to Christmas Tree Farm yesterday, our regular haunt and journey down there and actually usually we wander around in the cold for hours and hours looking for the right tree but this time we got out of the car park spotted the tree right there bought it and within within five minutes we were back in the car with our own tree for this season how are you doing okay with all that i mean you know christmas is a time of a celebration yes of enjoyment yes but there's stress and there's christmas anxiety 
uh, comes in so often. And um, I hope this, this next hour really gives us a chance to recalibrate, as I often say. Jesus said, when, when you break bread, do this in remembrance of me. And, you know, there's those times where we need to stop what we're doing, all our activity, and just remember the truth of the good news of who we are in Christ and what God has done for each one of us. The promise in Scripture that says you're returning and rest, you shall be saved. Throw away those useless shades You don't need them anymore Come follow down the ancient path In returning and rest You shall be saved In returning and rest you shall be saved Your pride ain't welcome here That hidden mask you wear Come follow down the ancient path In returning and rest shall be saved in returning and rest you shall be saved to every tribe and tongue the Savior's voice still calls Follow down the ancient path In returning and rest You shall be saved In returning and rest You shall be saved In returning and rest You shall be saved Returning and rest, you shall be saved. Have you heard? Do you know the power of God's grace? Have you heard? Do you know the power? shall be saved in returning and rest you shall be saved yeah returning and rest we shall be saved and so often we think it's our struggling and our self effort that gets us there no it's leaning back into the everlasting arms and I can see Mark is leaning back in the green room in fact he's uh, drinking a cup of tea at the moment and uh, I really want to welcome him to our afternoon homespun this afternoon so let's have you up on the screen Mark yeah there we are great Hello. to see you how nice are you doing you mm. I'm doing well thank you yeah a bit cold but, um, Cold day today. <laughs> Last time we saw each other in person, it was a very hot day. Yeah. And uh, it was down in Sussex, on the Sussex Downs, in a barn, where you were playing alongside me for that, this series of um, videos that we did called Trails of Grace. And we had some fun, didn't we? I enjoyed it. 
was a great day, yeah. yeah it was a great was, day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was great not only because of the music, but, I, you know, there was, a, there was a spirit of friendship and warmth and uh, mm. people connecting together. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was, that was, for me, you know, the bedrock of what our life is in Christ is about, yes, acknowledging he is Lord, but being together to do that and connecting together. Yeah. And I was privileged to, to have you because you are a very um, well-respected, notable songwriter, musician, worship leader. And for many years, you've had a long association with vineyard churches, haven't you, which has taken you in many different streams. Yeah, I've been really, um, I guess, blessed, the word is, um, mm. to have accidentally landed in the vineyard movement. Uh, in the 90s, so in 90, 94, I think, New Year's Day, 94. Hmm. And, um, yeah, some of my closest friends, you know, I've met there in that church in St Albans. Hmm. And hmm. so it was just an incredible, an incredible place to land in as a new hmm. believer, uh, because hmm. we had this guy, um, Graham Ord. I don't know, hmm. do you know Graham? Hmm. Yeah. So... If you don't know him, you know his song, which is The Lord is Gracious and Compassionate. Mm. Um, and he was just this incredible sort of mentor to a load of us, a guitar player, you know, showed me how to play slide guitar and um, mm. really just sort of learned about worship and the presence of God, um, mm. which, you know, and then just this sort of journey has, has opened up from that really. Mm. Um, through again, like I say, connections and relationships and yeah. opportunities, yeah. And you're you're in Bedford now, aren't you? In in the sort of lower part of the Midlands, somewhere between <laughs> London and the Midlands, really. Uh, that's a special place because I remember we had a, a fabulous um, way way back, well before you were born, uh, yeah. a gathering with uh, Kendrick and Dave Fellingham and Chris Bowater in Olney. Mm -hmm. which is not just down the road from you, isn't it? That's, That's right, where yeah. John Newton and William Calpo wrote the hymn writer, uh, God Moves in a Mysterious Way, uh, were. So you're in a good place, a good spot to be mm. where you are in Bedford there. Yeah, yeah we, we love it. And we love visiting mm. Olney, um, or Oni mm -hmm. as they call it, around here. Yeah. And uh, okay. we, all, we actually go, the River Ouse runs through Bedford and Olney and all the different villages around here. So you mm. can um, you can jump in the river on a hot day down there. Oh, it's nice. beautiful. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So you've got. We were talking because your kids are downstairs, mm -hmm. and uh, what are they doing? Some sort of a assault course at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Top <laughs> secret. Yeah, assault course happening downstairs. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Top yeah. Secret. Lemmy Lemmy's just started um, parkour, sort of learning mm. parkour, jumping over things, jumping off things. Oh wow. Um, oh, yeah. So he's he's training his sister up. <laughs> okay. And like m my uh, grandchildren, uh, they homeschool. Is that right? That's right, yeah. 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 yeah so Lemmy's same. 15 and Lainey's 11, and mm. they've never been to a school. So they've just been around, around the yeah. family, around the home, doing different things. So, yeah, just yeah. a different kind of life that they've grown up with. So. Uh, and that's a lifestyle choice for you. Uh, why, why did you choose home, homeschooling? Well, so my wife um, is from Argentina, and she went mm. into missions with YWAM. And mm. she would run into a lot of these families who were home educating their kids, kind of because they were moving around a lot and doing missions. Mm. And she always sort of loved the idea of that. Um, I took a bit of persuading. But... <laughs> The year we moved to Bedford, my son was four and it was like he was, you know, it was like, is he going to go to the school around the corner sort of thing? Mm. And we just felt like, well, there's no need for him to really. He's, we're, mm. we're really happy. He's this little guy. He doesn't really know what's going on yet. We don't really need mm. to send him to school. Um, mm. So we just left it a year and then we started talking about home ed. And we just decided, let's take a year at a time and see how it goes, see if we, mm. if it's working. And um, quite amazing, really, because Bedford is one of the biggest places for home ed. So we started meeting all these people. Um, mm. I mean, so many now. 
and and during mm. through the lockdown and, and all that a lot more people just sort of took their kids out of school and just said either because they weren't coping in school through this or that I mean that wasn't our reason our reason was just to do something a bit different um have a close family have lots of family mm. time um but we've along the way we've met so many people so many amazing people and um mm. yeah people do it for all yeah. different reasons but we really feel for us it's a real kingdom thing you know of just that close family um and yeah I, I think when they were really little we just thought we don't really want to give our kids to strangers to mm -hmm. for all that time you know mm. <laughs> it's like we mm. like having them around and yeah. they like being around yeah. so that was the hard and I, I found you know um with our own grandchildren that their, their education has actually widened and accelerated uh you know so it's not just a sort of uh amateur attempt at, t at teaching there's a whole no. syllabus that uh, is really really cool really really good you, yeah. you find people do it in different ways and so no two no two families do it quite the same way some mm. people are very if they're very academic families will be doing it to give their kids a better academic mm -hmm. base because mm. they've you know that one-on-one -on -one, you can get much more done and others mm. uh, others for us it's more a holistic thing of like happy happy life you know and a a good strong self of of sense of god and of mm. self and um yeah that was kind of, that's kind that's of our great. heart behind it really that's let great. them be creative let them do follow the things that god's put within them to do mm. so mm. sometimes that works yeah. probably sometimes it doesn't but you know it's, <laughs> it's being real you know so you're doing the thing that you were called to do but uh for you, how did it all start? How did you get into this malarkey, you know, worship leading and uh, how did you get into it? Uh, yeah, well, it, uh, it did feel like it, all this. it did feel like an accident. Um, so my sister became a Christian through reading the Gideon's Bible at school. Mm. And when she was only 11, and then she did the really weird thing of getting baptized, <laughs> you know, yeah, and we were all yeah. kind of like, oh dear. What's all that about? Yeah. <laughs> She's gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. They've got her. Um, <laughs> and then when I was 16, I was in, in a car crash. And I prayed really earnestly for the first time that God would save my friends. Um, and, you know, long story short, there was a lot of big coincidences that happened around that which meant those guys are still alive today. And um, I prayed once more that my friend Greg wouldn't lose his leg. And they, mm. they did an operation. It was all like looking really gloomy. And then they did an operation and they saved his leg. And it was kind of like, Great. I prayed this mm. sort of, if you do this, God, for me, I don't know if you know who I am or what, <laughs> you know, but if you do yeah. it, I'll give my life to you. And I, it was just so desperate. I was just like, you know, I thought, what have I got to bargain with? <laughs> Nothing really, mm. apart from uh, this life. I didn't know what I was saying, didn't know what it meant. But then having had that sort of brush with death and mortality and how fragile life is, I think I started to really search for what the meaning was of it all. And I had that question, you know, like, what is it? Mm. What is life? What is this life all about? And mm. why is there so much suffering? And why is there so much pain? Um, even in my own life, you know, I could see that I was in pain, you know, I was in a lot of mm. emotional hurts and pain and loneliness. Um, and then let alone looking at the mess of the world, you know, it was like my own mm. world was, I could see the mess out there, but I could also see the mess in here. And um, gradually I, I just, a lot through music, you know, sort of listening to a lot of the classic, not classical, but the classic songs, you know, the answer is blowing in the wind. Oh yeah, what well, does that the same with me, yeah. What does yeah. that mean? It mm. means something, I don't know what. Or listening to All Along the Watchtower, Jimi Hendrix version, mm. and going, mm. this is saying something to me. And then the big one really was Bob Marley, um, because he would actually sing scripture 
mm. in in his songs. You know, don't mm. gain the world and lose your soul. Wisdom is better than silver and gold. And there was somebody who actually had a faith in God. You know, I know a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it really, it really helped me to get to the scriptures. Mm. Um, so one of my close friends was uh, at school, became a Rastafarian. And we mm -hmm. would have these big, long chats. And he would kind of bring me some truth quite kind of forcefully, you know, about God. God is real and anyone who doesn't believe that's a fool, you know, <laughs> all this sort mm. of stuff. I was like, oh, mm. oh what? <laughs> um, and then I read, um, I read John 15 one night and, and it just offended me so much the way that Jesus was speaking. And Tell I knew, everyone what John 15 says. So says, John 15 what? is, is this parable of a, the true vine and the, mm my father is the gardener and it says every branch that remains in me will bear fruit every branch that doesn't remain in me will be cut off and thrown as fuel to the fire <laughs> and i was like how dare you <laughs> you know how can how can a man say that every branch that doesn't abide in me he not didn't say mm. abide in god he said abide in me mm. and i thought that is so arrogant that is so it just it it just offended me, and at the same time, it sort of cut me to the core, and mm. I I just knew I had to read more about Jesus, and eventually I started to talk to Jesus, you know, and thinking I think this guy, I think this is, I think this is it, what this guy is saying. Because I'd searched in so many ways and so many different places. And then it was like, I had to just, I remember kneeling in my bedroom and praying the Lord's Prayer because I knew it from primary school. Hmm. And, you know, nothing happened. I just knelt and did it. But then something had happened, you know. <laughs> hmm. And it was like this faith started to grow in me. Hmm. Um, and then it, eventually I, I staggered into a church um, in St. Albans where I grew up and they were worshipping and I'd never quite heard anything like it or felt anything like it uh, you know the music wasn't great you know we're probably singing your songs Dave uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were, rubbish songs <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we, we probably were singing uh, All Hail the Lamb and like mm -hmm. Show Your Power it was yeah. that that era of that era yeah worship yeah. Um, and I would just feel God's presence as I was singing these songs, just like mm. landing on me. And then I would kind of push, you know, shudder away mm. and God would mm. draw back. And it was like this sort of wooing and this, I didn't feel safe, you know what I mean, with God. Mm. And then gradually I kind of let my guard down. Mm. And then one day <laughs> I went forward for prayer and this woman prayed for me and she started just prophesying over me, which I had no grid for any of this. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know what was going on at all in church. It was so weird and different. And she started saying all this stuff about music and God wants to use your music. You know, that's good. Cool. You've got to learn to make Jesus Lord. And she just went for it. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit when she prayed mm. for me. Um, mm. And that's when really things started, started to change, you know, in my life. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, it already started, but that's when it really accelerated. Yeah, accelerated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it'd be good if we heard a couple of songs from you, Mark. Um, yeah. Yeah, here's some of that music in action. And one, one of the ones that you're really w known for, I know it's going back, but a mm. song called Surrender, which was very popular uh, and, or is very popular, but it was used... Uh, as the title of one of the Vineyard's albums, um, yeah, you know, and you've worked on a number of those albums, so maybe, yeah, as one of those two songs, you could sing that, and yeah. then we'll pick things up after that, yeah, 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 love to, yeah, thanks for having me, by the way, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Well, we'll start, we'll start with that one, the surrender, um, which is probably written just a couple of years after the story that I just told, um. So I was 19 when I became a Christian 
I think I wrote this when I was 23. So, uh, yeah, here it is. I'm giving you my heart And all that is within I lay it all down For the sake of you, my King I'm giving you my dreams Laying down my Give us another one, Mark. Yeah, man. You're on a roll. So this is uh, a newer one. It was written uh, as a co-write with um, a guy called David Osby and a guy called Maria, a woman called Maria from um, Denmark and Norway. We're written in the lockdown. Really, when we're thinking, you know, what what is the what does the future look like? And um, this was our kind of response to that. Well, what next? What next? Well, same as ever for us. The kingdom and the king and all that stuff. So this is called Real Thing. Here we go. I'll try and remember it. <laughs> There's a grace that comes when we say yeah.
songs there and um yeah certainly looking at the feed here you're getting the thumbs up from everybody they're really enjoying <laughs> the the songs and the music but also the message behind it thanks uh, two great songs thank you mark mm. you mentioned it earlier and uh, I, I just want to develop that a little bit you talked about the spirit coming you know the holy spirit mm. and al although your um your sphere of operation is not just in vineyard churches it's it's much wider that was your birthing place in 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 ministry and, and, and calling and i know it's that that sense of intimacy and you know not being afraid of an emotional experience that is very very much a characteristic of a vineyard uh, churches can you unpack that a little bit what you're looking for in worship you know a lot of people they they sing them the modern songs and then they move on uh, but mm. it seems to me there's an expectation for more than that. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, <laughs> and I think it's probably taking a lifetime to unpack. Yeah. But I, I love, um, I mean, the, the presence of God 
it was David, wasn't it, who said, in your presence is fullness of joy. And hmm. you're right, it was my, my experience. It was 1994. Um, there was wild, the wild wind of the Spirit was blowing through some churches. And I really needed that coming from where I was coming from, you know, on drugs and all over the place to come into a church where things would happen. God would do things. God would say things. Um, you know, the example I gave of that woman, just she knew things about me that nobody told her, you know, God had told her. Um, and so, yeah, coming into that, and it wasn't just the vineyard. It was, um, I, the church I was filled with the spirit and was an Elim church uh, in St. Albans. And, you know, we would visit Soul Survivor over in Watford. You know, a young Matt Redman mm. was over there. And and it really wasn't about who was singing the songs. We, You know, Matt Redman wasn't a famous person or anything like that. Uh, it was just this hunger that was around and that I felt in me and I still feel that hunger I still I still need God you know I still without his presence um, church is no fun you know uh, reading the Bible is no fun but as soon as you're filled with his spirit it's like all these things come alive in a different way um, mm -hmm. and there's a you know we're, we're told on we in scripture to go on being filled with the spirit mm. so when we gather mm. i think that our expectation is that god is in our midst that mm. there will be prophecy that there will be worship that there will be a sense that you know god has come in a special way mm. to dwell with us and i think if you have that it's a hunger right it's a hunger for mm. his presence um and i still have that you know i still mm. have that hunger and I still have times when I'm so satisfied in his presence. Um, you know, so I'm not some like really together guy who can do this on his own. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I really need him every day for the challenges that we face mm. in our lives. You know, it's um, mm. to seek his presence more, you know. So over and above the beautiful songs and the new songs and some of the old songs that are badly played or whatever, it's the <laughs> presence, you know. Yeah. Um, you, you said it yourself, you know, you, they weren't playing it that well. They were not great songs or whatever. But an encounter with God, um, our worship facilitates that in a, in a very real and meaningful way. And, and I think through for your... me, sorry, yeah, go on. Go on, no, you, get, you carry on. No, I was just saying like for this... For me, coming into a church where you know God was doing things was really important because mm. I'd been to churches where you know I would probably enjoy it now, but I didn't enjoy it at the time. It was this kind of you make you feel bad, you're a sinner, <laughs> you know, do something, become like us, you know, but there didn't seem to be anything there, and I was really hungry spiritually um and i think it's important in this moment that the church doesn't lose that you know mm. that we can we can an unbeliever can walk into a room you know and the presence they feel the presence of god mm. because god is there in a special way you mm. know so mm. yeah cool. i love that when it happens that is so cool Okay, we're going to put you back in the green room just for a moment. We're going to come back in a minute, chat a bit more, have another song from you, Mark. We talked about the barn, didn't we, where we met? And this is a song uh, which uh, was on the Trails of Grace, the second, the second video. Natasha played the violin beautifully. Oh, what love. Oh, what grace that drew my heart and cloaked my name 
when I think about my knees shake me back to Calvary a lonely hill a wooden cross Stretched arms, you paid the cost. When I think about what love means, take me back. Calvary Oh, I believe Yes, I believe The blood you shed You shed for me Son of man, word made flesh, love divine. When I think about what love means. Take me back to Calvary. Take me back to Calvary. Take me back to Calvary, that first love, that first encounter. Yeah. Mark, come come back now, because, um, yeah, get your guitar. Somebody's asked, actually, what is your guitar? Can you hold it up, Mark? So it's a Loudon. It's a Loudon. Oh, it's, it's a very loud one. <laughs> and a Loudon. Yeah, from Ireland. Yeah, this, this was given to me um, by some friends that it belonged to their dad, and... Um, when he passed away, they gave, kindly just gave me this guitar, which was yeah. unbelievable, really. Yeah. yeah. Amongst others gift. that you've got, and in fact, uh, we would have had you last week, but you were playing down the road at the rugby club, weren't you? Uh, I was playing at the Bedford Blues, yeah. The Bedford Blues. Mm. And in fact, blues is a bit of your heritage there, because um, you've got a sort of rock band uh vera cruz what does that mean vera cruz what, what, it's where just a place from? it's a place um it's a state in mexico but it's also a place in brazil but i think okay. he w it was the name of a person um oh. yeah so i don't know it looked yeah. good on a t-shirt so um that's about as it deep as it is it. yeah so yeah i encourage people you know to check out that that site uh you're a trio yeah, and, uh, three piece. You see the other side of Mark singing there. He really goes for the high energy stuff, <laughs> and uh, I think you'll love it. We almost put a video up, but uh, I think time is probably running away with us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so give us another song, Mark, um, before we move on because time is is moving on. Yeah, another song. Uh, <laughs> hey. I don't know, hey. Let's do it. Uh, this is a song, um, it's not released yet, it's called Bring Me Low.
when I seek the praise of man I forget where I belong bring me low bring me low should I worship to thrones of affluence bring me low this is where I'll find you down at the feet of Jesus here at your wounded side oh this is where Into the soil of mercy Small like a seed I fall Oh, this is where Your kingdom grows Oh, Down at the feet of Jesus Here at your wounded side Bring me low This is where you'll find me Into the soil of mercy Sean Larkins put up here, thank you for this song, Humility and Vulnerability. And uh, I think that's it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, Mark, thank you for sharing uh, today. Well, my pleasure, You've man. I've spoken to a lot of people and inspired a lot of people. Oh. We're very grateful for you um, spending the time with us. Um, the video that uh, you are appearing with me will be coming up very shortly um, over on YouTube. Uh, so we're going to draw our, e our afternoon to a bit of a close, but there's a couple of things I just want to say. There's two people on my mind today. Um, some of you will know, I'm certainly you will have heard them through the recordings uh, of a uh, great trumpeter, uh, Raul Dolavira, who um, played for many, many years on uh, Christian events and uh, recordings. And he recently had a stroke, which uh, has seriously, seriously affected him, obviously, in a very big way. So I thought it would be good if we, as a community, could just lift up Raoul this afternoon. Uh, and that brings to mind my dear friend, uh, Steve Criddle, who for 20 years toured with me uh, and suffered a similar stroke. And um, it's his birthday today. Um, and he is, uh, yeah. He's really not um, able to function uh, properly at all as a result of that stroke. So I thought just for a few uh, a minute or two, we could just lift up both of them as a mm. community. And we pray, Lord, blessing upon each one of them. You know them by name. You know their 
plans, you have the plans for them, you have a purpose for them, you have not forsaken them. Yeah. And we pray that you will surround them with the arms of grace and you will, you will strengthen them at this time. You'll turn back the things that the devil would I impose upon them and you'll bring some sense of restoration and some sense of healing. Bring peace to their hearts where they feel they've missed their way. Let them know they're in your hands. And we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus for goodness, mercy and blessing to be upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining with us, everybody. Um, we're going to shortly go over to YouTube if you want to. Uh, Mark hasn't even seen the video yet. Mark <laughs> will be playing lap steel. Tell us about that lap steel, Mark. Great. You, uh, <coughs> something quite unusual, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, um, it's uh, based on a Hawaiian guitar called a Wiesenborn. Mm. Um, but it, it's interesting because it has a, a hollow neck. This kind of usually a guitar is quite solid here, but it's like the sound box continues. Um, and you play it on your lap, you play it with a bit of metal called a steel, yeah. and there's no frets. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful sound. <laughs> Lovely. Well, you'll see it in a minute. Uh, when you flick over to YouTube, Dave Bilber site, uh, I think Pat's going to put up the link. Um, there it'll be going live at five o'clock so you just about got time to check out the football results as long as there's not a um, uh, lot of injury time um, but yeah five o'clock will be there uh, at YouTube and do please share share it if you can if you like it that is of course uh, a song called these are the secrets and uh, interesting John 15 that was something yeah. you referred to wasn't it and there we are playing <laughs> it together so no didn't know that so that's, that, that's marvelous yeah. Thanks once again, Mark. All the hey. best for Bedford. Yeah, and, uh, thanks hey, a lot. It's been great to have you on. And uh, I'm going to finish with a song. Yeah, we were talking about experience. Passion is important. So this is a real simple song to send you on your way. Send your fire to my soul That can be contained or be controlled Send your fire to my soul that can't be contained or be controlled Let it burn 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 Send your fire to my soul That can't be contained or be controlled Send your fire to my soul That can't be contained or be controlled Let it burn 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 Send your fire to my soul That can be contained or be controlled Send your fire to my soul That can be contained or be controlled Let it burn 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 let it burn, let it burn. Yeah, thanks so much. See you in the new year. Happy Christmas, everybody. And follow that link and uh, we'll see you over there in beautiful summer, in beautiful Sussex, in a barn. Mark and I doing Secrets of the Vine.